Well, hello, my name is Lyndon. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. It's a pleasure to have you here. In this video, we're gonna take quite a deep dive into a 12 bar blues for tenor sax. I made one for alto sax. It got lots and lots and lots of views and people on there said, please, can you do one for tenor sax? So here it is. Uh, we're gonna be following, we're gonna think about what the structure of a 12 bar blues is. I'm gonna give you a generic melody for one so that you could play potentially through any 12 bar blues using this kind of generic melody. You could also develop that melody and it's really cool. I'm gonna write it down for you. There's a worksheet at the end. We're gonna have a look at the chords for a 12 bar blues and make sure that we fully understand all of the chords and on this particular chord chart, which I'm also gonna copy for you and put at the end of the video. Uh, we're gonna have a look at improvisation. I'm gonna show you two uh, really good methods to get the hang of improvising over a 12 bar blues and make a fabulous solo uh, doing not super complicated stuff. It's gonna sound really, really, really nice. You can definitely do this. I'm gonna show you four different ways that you can get backing tracks for a 12 bar blues and put links or, or show you completely how to get those. Uh, and if you've got any questions about any of this, you can always ask me in the comments below because I try and be super responsive and respond to all of your lovely comments and your questions as well. So what more could I possibly do? I'm trying as hard as I possibly can to help as many sax players out there across the world in Germany and Australia and Canada. It's just fantastic. Um, before I take this deep dive, I do want to say my thank yous. So thank you to all of the people that have liked and subscribed to my videos. Thank you to the people that have supported this by sharing and liking and feeding back with positive comments. Thank you so much to the people that have given me super thanks on YouTube and bought me coffees, mm. sent some tips on PayPal, because guess what? That massively makes a difference to my life. I really, really, really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button because just subscribing really helps and sharing does. Let's dive into it. Right, so what is a 12 bar blues? If we were to give it a word description, well, it's a fundamental chord progression in the blues genre. And you'll see the influence of the 12 bar blues everywhere in jazz, in rock and roll, in country and western. Um, it, it, it's just everywhere and in pop songs too. It's a real sort of lasting form that, that just crosses so many different genres. So if you understand it and if you're familiar with it, then that's got to be a good thing. And to give you three massive tunes that follow the 12 bar blues progression, one would be Johnny Be Good, another would be Hound Dog, and another would be Sweet Home Chicago. And, but there are variations, or 12 bar blues and its variations can be seen absolutely everywhere in music everywhere. So what I've got here is I have got a kind of, uh, a really straightforward chord chart which has uh, a 12 bar blues on it. Now, why is it a 12 bar blues? Well, no prizes for guessing how many bars in a 12 bar blues. See, that was my doorbell. People are knocking on the door. Are you doing a blues? Can I have a listen? Uh, so look, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that's why it's a 12 bar blues. Now blues do turn up in 36 bars or multiples of this, but we're gonna be having a look at a 12 bar blues. And, uh, and what I've done here is is I have written out a generic kind of melody that will fit over them all. So, uh, and which I'm gonna play for you in a moment. So all of the chords of a 12 bar blues in this chord chart, they are all the same type of chord. Can you see that? They're all something with a seven, so D with a seven. And what that means is that all of these chords are, have got a name and the name is Mixolydian. Uh, or dominant seventh, and you can use both of those words to describe this type of chord. And what they are is they are exactly the same as a major scale. So D7 is exactly the same as a major scale, except the seventh note has been flattened. That's all it is. So if I was to play D7, if you think about D major, I'll play it for you, here's D major. <laughs> Now I'm gonna play D7, which is exactly the same notes, but with a flattened seventh note, so the C sharp becomes a C. Mm -hmm. 
and all of the chords on this particular chord chart are exactly the same type of chords. They're all mixolydians or dominant seventh chords, which means they're exactly the same as the major scale. So the G major, you've got, you would normally have an F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp and G is the major scale. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F and G, uh, it would be G7. And the same with the A7, you'd normally have A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A, and that becomes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. And you can also think of this uh, as the fifth mode of something. So if we go back to D, D, uh, the notes of D7 are D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and D. And that is the same bunch of notes that you would find in G major. So the way that you could think about this is that D7 is the fifth mode of G major. And G7 is the fifth mode of C major. And A7 is the fifth mode of D major. What I've done here is I've written out a generic melody as you see and I'm going to play that just on its own so that you can have a listen to it and I'm going to write down the words in the titles below. <laughs> And then if I put that, so I'm using an app here. The app that I'm using is iReal Pro, which is an absolutely fabulous app. If you haven't got it, you should definitely go and get it. It's amazing. It's not expensive and it's available through all of the platforms as far as I know, iPhone, Android, desktop computer, whatever, you should definitely get this. It's absolutely brilliant. And I was, I've printed this out from my computer just in case you haven't got it. Like I said, I'm gonna write this down. So I'm now gonna play this generic melody over the top. I suggest that you learn this because it will come in really, really useful. Yeah, and I could just take that around and around and around. And if you learn that by ear, you can also throw that around a little bit and do some nice variations, and that will sound absolutely fantastic. So we know what type of chords they are. We've got a generic melody that we could play over any kind of 12 bar blues situation, which is fantastic. And now let's have a look at a couple of ways that we could uh, improvise over a 12 bar blues and make a fabulous sound. So probably the most straightforward and easily accessible way is plan A, which is use a blue scale over everything. Now, if I'm gonna use a blue scale over this, I just want to make sure that I completely understand uh, what a blue scale is. And I know lots of you do, but what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write out uh, my recipe for a blue scale so that I can be 100% sure that I've done my due diligence and that you understand what a blue scale is. So the way that I think about a blue scale is, well, a blue scale is a type of minor scale. And at the moment, we're in the key of D, we're looking for a D blue scale, which is a type of D minor scale. So I think of D minor as it could be the second mode of C major. So it's exactly the same as C major, but starting on a D. And that would give me D Dorian minor. So if ever I'm looking for a blue scale, a minor scale, I would always go a one whole tone down. So if I'm thinking about D minor, if I go one whole tone down, that will give me these notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now this is my C major. And then if I go from the second note or the second mode, I get D, E, F, G, a, B, C, and D, and this is my D minor seven. 
uh, and that is my Dorian. Now, it, we know that the root and the third, the fifth and the seventh are really significant. So I get root, third, fifth and seventh. And this would make the chord tones. And that is one, three, five and seven. And if I number these while I'm here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Now, if I add in the fourth note of the scale, which is this one here, to the chord tones, I get this, D, F, G, A, and C, and that would be one, three, four, five, and seven, and this gives me something super powerful and super useful as a saxophonist, especially if you're in bands and stuff, and this would be my minor pentatonic. Excuse my horrible writing. And this would still be D minor seven. Uh, now, if I add in the flat five, whatever that note is, well, in this case, the fifth note is A. So if I add in A flat, which is another way of saying G sharp, I'm gonna call it G sharp in this case for no particularly good reason. D, F, G, G sharp. A, C, and D, and this is my one, three, four, flat five, uh, five, seven, and roots, and this is still D minor seven, but it is da ba da da. It is a blue scale, and I say ba 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 da because blue scales are so fabulously useful, and they sound so 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 nice especially on a saxophone. They really, really do. So uh, that is the recipe. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I'm going to take a photograph of this or I'll scan it and I'm going to set it up on uh, and put it at the end of the video so that you can take a screenshot. I hope that was useful to you. Right, so let's just put a blue scale. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to play these notes here of the blue scale in two octaves. I'm just going to go from from low D up to palm key D and come back down again. And that is already going to sound really, really nice. The first time I'm just going to play the scale up and the scale straight down. And the second time I'm just going to play some phrases using the blue scale and listen to how nice it sounds. It's going to sound really, really, really nice. sound nice sounds really 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 nice so you can just use a blue scale over the entire form and just practice playing uh, licks from the blue scale and again I will as you will have seen I will have written all of those notes down for you so that if you want to copy those phrases or you know decipher those phrases you can uh, cool so I did say to you that I'm going to find some other forms of backing tracks. Let's have a look. This is iReal Pro. Uh, I love iReal Pro because it's just so useful. It brings up the names of the chords and all of that kind of thing. But the sound quality isn't as fantastic as some of the other apps. And there is an app called Quartet, which I also strongly recommend. They've, uh, this is Quartet One. And if you go into, uh, if you do a search for blues, it comes up with a C Jam Blues. This it and I've made sure that I've gone into settings and made sure that it's in B flat for tenor saxophones. I'm going to use exactly the same technique now using a blue scale to just improvise over 12 bars of this. Have a listen to the difference in quality of sound, it's really cool. Uh, right, so let's go.
think that sounds perfectly adequate solo. Really, really, really nice solo. You could also have a look at Session Band. Uh, this is from uh, Session Band Jazz Number no. One. I've gone to Medium Upswing. If you have a look at Demo Ten, they've got uh, sorry Demo Nine. They've got a basic minor blues. I've selected that. Uh, sorry, a basic major blues. I should have said. I've made sure that I'm not in E flat, but I'm in B flat. Uh, for tenor saxophones and I have muted off uh, the tenor uh, and the metronome and so I'll use the same technique over that. <laughs> And then one final idea, I mean there's loads of loads of places that you could find a, a blues backing track, but if you go to YouTube, I had a look on YouTube and I just did a search for 12 bar blues in C and the, uh, so concert C being uh, my D for, for tenor sax, um, I found this one, classic 12 bar blues. Now I need to be a little bit careful here because I don't want to get done for, for a copyright strike, so I won't play too much of it, but I think this sounds really, really, really nice. Nice. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube too. Sounds really, really, really nice. So those are a few different ways that you can find backing tracks and have lots of fun using a blue scale to improvise over the top of a 12 bar blues. So uh, I wanna give you another method, uh, which I'm gonna go back to uh, good old iReal Pro. So what we could do is that we could play the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of each one of these chords. So playing the root, third, and fifth, seventh of the D7, then do the same for the G7, and so on and so forth through the whole chord chart. And this would be plan B. Follow the chords and change key as you go. So I'm going to do this a couple of times using the iReal uh, app because it's nice and slow and nice and clear. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down in the description below exactly the, the notes that I'm playing. The first time I'm just going to be playing root 3, 5 and 7 and the second time I'm going to throw those chord tones around but I'm not doing anything outside of those notes and see how nice it sounds. It sounds really 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 nice. So have a listen. Sounds all right, sounds lovely, sounds really, really, really cool, and you're following all of the chords, so that's a really good way to go. I have thrown everything that I have at this lovely 12 bar blues in D for tenor saxophone. I do hope you found that useful. Please, please, please subscribe and tell your friend to subscribe and share my videos, please. If you feel like buying me a coffee, uh, I would be so grateful and so would my wife. It makes us dance around the house to enjoy it. It really, really does. It really helps massively. Um, if you have any questions, then do ask. Uh, I think that's everything and just thank you so much. Thank you for your support and your lovely comments. It really, really does have a huge impact. I want to help you as much as I possibly can. So do let me uh, have any recommendations that you've got for videos or things that you'd like to see. And if you're not sure about anything, stick it in the comments below. All right, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.